Okay, hello. We're going to be finding the interquartile range using normal distribution. And here's the problem that I put out for us. Uh, it just says, a road survey has shown that the speeds of cars along a road are normally distributed with a mean speed of 97 kilometers an hour and a standard deviation of 14 kilometers an hour. All right, and I highlighted the important parts. And let's just draw a picture of what this means, starting with normally distributed. What does that mean? All right, normally distributed means that the data is going to follow a, a bell-shaped curve, as we call it. And um, the, the top of the curve is where the mean is. And in this case, that's 97. So most, most cars travel around 97 kilometers an hour. And here's the question that I'm going to pose for us. Find the interquartile range for this distribution. And interquartile range is a big word, so we'll just call it Q from now on. Um, but what does this mean? Um, what this means is it's, it's saying the interquartile range is uh, the, the middle 50%, the middle 50%, first of all. So if I were to draw that on here, the middle 50% would look something like 25% on both sides like this, all right? 25% on both sides, both symmetrical. So what I'm really asking here, and it doesn't say this in the problem, it's just saying find the interquartile, interquartile range, is I'm saying between what two speeds do the middle 50% of people drive? That's what the question's really asking, but it might not state that. So what that means is I want to find these two speeds right here. I want to find um, x1, which will be below the mean, and x2, which will be something above the mean. So this, so, okay, so, so IQ, so the interquartile range is going to be the difference between those two quartiles. It's going to be uh, that speed minus that speed. And yes, you could, when you state the answer, just say it's this speed and this speed. But if we want to be techni technical about it, a, a range usually is the difference between two values meaning takeaway. Okay, so the IQR, IQR is also, IQR is also the middle 50%. Middle 50%. So what this type of problem is, is it's what's called an inverse normal problem. And inverse normal means I'm given the probability and I have to find some values. Got to find some speed in this case. Okay. All right, inverse normal problem is when we're given the probability, p, big P for probability, and we've got to find X. So how do we do that? Okay, so my first step is if we're going to do anything with normal distribution, we're going to use Z formula, which is Z equals the, the measurement minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so in our case, uh, the, the mean is... 97, and the standard deviation for this problem is 14. Let's kind of keep that there. Now, we'll get, we'll get to it in a minute, but we're, we're solving for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some algebra, and I'm going to rearrange this equation to solve for x. So uh, use this formula. Now I'm going to solve for x. And when I say solve for x, I just mean rearrange this equation. So I multiply z by the standard deviation, and that equals x minus mu. Uh, then I'd add the mean to the other side, and I would get z times the standard deviation plus the mean equals x. And I like the x on the left-hand side, so I'll say it looks like this. All right, I've bumped the problem out of the way a little bit. Um, so my next step is to find out what Z is. And now I'm going to do this using the good old-fashioned Z table, okay? And now you can do it with the graphics calculator, of course, but I'll show you how to uh, find it on here. So we're going to say next step um, is to find the Z value given the probability. Now the probability, I don't need to find both of these z values because they're going to be the same. All right, since they both represent 25%, this one's going to be a positive z value and that one's going to be a negative z value. 
What is the Z value? It's how many standard deviations it is from the mean. So my probability is not 0 0.5 total, or it is 0 0.5 total, but when I use the Z table, I just want the probability that's one side of the from the mean. All right, so I'm just going to look at 0 0.25. Now, how this works is, is like this. Whoa, here's a, a close-up of the Z table here. The part in yellow are all the probabilities, and the part in pink are the Z values. And so I'm in reverse here. I'm going to look up where to, where's the closest I can find 0 0.25. 0 0.25. It gets close here. So my Z value is going to be 0 0.6. That's the second decimal place, 0 0.67, but it's not close enough. Over here in this difference column, if I add 13 more to those last decimal places, I'll get 0 0.2499, 0 0.2499, and that's pretty close. 2499 is as close as I can get. So that means my Z value is 0 0.6, second decimal place 7, third decimal place 4. Okay, now that's, with a graphics calculator, you'll get it to about um, eight decimal places. I don't know. So 0 0.674 is what we'll use using the table. All right, back to our problem. So we got a Z value of, well, that one's going to be positive 0 0.674, and that one's going to be a negative 0 0.674. Because if it's below the mean, it's going to be a negative Z value. If it's below the mean, negative Z value. Okay. Cool. Next step. Let's put a box around there. Next step is, um, is to substitute. See, that's why I like rearranging this formula, because now you can substitute Z and the standard deviation and the mean all in here to solve for X. Uh, so I can say, okay, uh, my first X1 is going to be the negative Z value. Don't forget to make it negative. Negative 0 0.674 times the standard deviation, 14, plus the mean, 97. Okay, so that first speed gives me 87.6 kilometers an hour. That's, we're almost there, we're almost there, that's one value. And uh, the x value above the mean, uh, substitute positive 0.674, the positive z value times the standard deviation, plus the mean again, and the speed that is above the mean gives me 106.4 kilometers an hour. Just about there. Now, maybe if you just put these two answers, because my question did say between what two speeds, between these two speeds, but if it asks the range, technically, the, it's, it's, the difference between, it's the difference between the two. Uh, so that would give us 106.4 minus 87.6 gives us 18.8 kilometers per hour for my final answer, I guess. And we could say that 50% of these drivers uh, drive between these two speeds, and so the interquartile range is almost 20 kilometers an hour. Okay, and that's, that's it for now. Good luck.